Hi guys, my name is Hannah Seba from HR Images. Today um, I've, been given, I've given, been given the 7200 f2.8 G Master lens from Sony, um, from Mirrorless Rentals in Australia. Uh, today I'll be doing a comparison with the Tamron 7200 USD model uh, with the EA3 adapter, the Canon 7200 Mark II version with the Metabones adapter and the 7200 f4 for Sony as well. I'll be doing a side-by-side -side comparison, having the images together, showing you the difference of the sharpness um, and giving you a bit of a rundown with the AFs and different sort of things. Um, unfortunately, today I didn't have an opportunity to have a beautiful model, so I'm using AKA <laughs> Kangaroo Jack, <Okay>. Colin. <laughs> I'll be doing some shots at 70mm, 100mm and 200 um, with all the lenses. Uh, F2.8 lens um, with this, the Tamron and the Canon. Um, F4 for all of them. I will also do f8 and give you different sort of f-stops to show you the difference and if there's vignetting um, the difference is in the image quality what the lenses produce so stay tuned for that and hope you guys enjoy weight wise this is the 7400 uh, 7200 f4 lens is actually the lightest um, the the g master Grab the G Master. Oh, no, this one. Yeah, def definitely mm. increase in weight there. Yeah. The G Master, it is heavier. I just wanted someone to confirm it with. Um, it is hev the, probably the heavier out of all of them, um, but it's not dramatically heavy. It's just a little weight. But when I'm using, um, I use it today at a corporate event. Um, the 7200 f 2.8 lens, the G Master. Um, I didn't have much issues with the weight. It felt really well balanced. You're just holding it and just shooting. Um, but if you're holding both lenses side by side, like in your hands, this will be a bit heavier. Um, AF, the G Master performed really well. Um, it is faster than having the Tamron uh, with the EA3 adapter. Now, this is I'm using on the A7 II. It could be different with the A7R2 or the A6300, um, but I haven't got any of those cameras to test, so I'm actually doing all, all the tests on the A7 II. Um, I did find the AF on the G Master faster than the, on, on the, ta than the Tamron with the adapter. Uh, the 7200 F4, using it now, the AF was fast and it was accurate. The good thing about the two Sony ones, the native ones, you get to use IAF with them, so it's um, you don't have to sort of take a shot and recompose. Whereas the Tamron and the Canon with the Metabones adapter, uh, you'll have to take the shot and sort of like focus and recompose. So they don't give you the full flexibility of the IAF. Um, with these two here, they, they're very, very similar. Very, very similar in weight. Probably just a fraction heavier this one. Yeah. Just. The, that's just a fraction heavier than that one. So it's, it's not a big weight difference to say, oh, you know, I'm not going to get that because it's too heavy. No, it's not. It, if you just want to, if you're very weight particular, this is just a fraction heavier. Um, the Canon with the Metabones adapter. Um, uh, the AF on this one is fast on the AF7 II. Uh, no issues there. You can't use the IAF. Um, I'll be having them side by side as well, comparison, and I'll also have the the um, full res images on a link below. So if you want to click on that, and you can be able to see them at your own pace, your own time, and you can compare it to for yourself. Um, yeah, that's really really about it. So. Um, now, I'll, I'll get on the computer and I'll talk to you a bit more about, about the lens. I'll try and keep the video as short as possible. Um, but that's just to give you a bit of an idea of the, diff the sort of the comparison sizing. Um, this is the smallest out of all of them. The G Master is larger than, a bit larger than the Tamron and the Canon. So it's just probably just a fraction bigger. It's not really a big difference. Um, and we'll compare the, the Bokeh. Um, I've taken shots at f2.8, f4 and f8. I've just stuck to the three ones because with these lenses, I haven't seen anyone really use more than f8 on these lenses. So um, I'll just stick to that. So um, yeah, stay tuned for the uh, the side-by-side -side comparison. And at the end of the video, I'll just give you my thoughts about it. And um, at the end of it, once you see it, have a look at the high-res images. You guys make the decision yourself. This is just to help you guys decide on 
which way to go if you want to spend the money for the G Master or the F4 lens or Canon. Uh, the bottom right is the G Master, top right is the Sony F4 lens, bottom left is Tamron and the top left is the Canon. Now, um, as you can see with the F4, it's still got a nice separation in the background. Uh, the F2.8 um, gives a bit um, nicer bokeh um, and a nicer separation than what the F4 does. If we just quickly go in, and I'll just zoom in the bar at 200%, just to show you the difference. Okay. So these are all at 200%. Now, with the one thing I've noticed um, with lenses is that the um, the Sony F4 is probably the um, produces the um, a cooler image, um, cooler color. If you can see, there's more of a, more of a tinge of blue um, that it produces, whereas the G Master a bit, leans a bit more into the warmth. The Tamron, the Tamron probably produces more of a warmer color, um, and the, um, out of all of them, then coming the Canon, then the G Master, and then the F4. The softest, uh, the Tamron produces at f2.8 looks the softest compared to all of them. Then you've got the Canon, which still looks soft, but it's still a bit, it's still sharper than the Tamron. But the F4 and the G Master definitely sharper than the Canon and the Tamron, as you can see on the eyes. Um, um, if you just quickly look at the bokeh as well at 70 mil, millimeter, um, you have a bit of a nice separation with the F4 lens, but it's sort of the F2.8 blows out the background better than what the, obviously the F4 does. I'll just go now into the 200 millimeters at F2.8. Uh, this is a 200 millimeter at F2.8. Um, when when shooting at 200 millimeter with all the lenses, you can see how the background is nicely compressed, and it gives a really nice separation. The f/4 becomes close to what the f/2.8 produces at uh, 200 millimeter, as you can see, with uh, the G Master, the Tamron, and the Canon. Just showing you now at 200 millimeter. Uh, as you can see, at 200 millimeter, the Tamron still does look soft at 200 millimeter because depending on the zoom lenses. Um, depending on the focal range, it does uh, certain zoom lenses as you go full to 200 mm, it gets really soft. Um, some retains its sharpness, so this is just showing you as well to see how if it can retain its sharpness. But it still sort of looks soft. The Tamron, the Canon does look soft as well, but it still has a bit of sh still looks a bit sharp, but it's not as sharp as what the F4 and the G Master can produce. Um, but again, the Tamron is the softest. And just looking at the, the bokeh, the background, at 200 millimeter on all of them, as you can sort of see. Um, these are all at F4. Uh, now the sort of background separation looking very identical um, to each other at F4. So the bokehs are very similar at F4 for all of them, I find. Um, just zooming in. At f4, the Tamron does look still look a bit soft, but it's sort of at f4 it does look a bit sharper than what it was at f2.8. Um, still finding the Canon sharper than the Tamron. Um, it does look a bit sharper than what it was as well at f2.8. Then you got the G Master as well. Um, if you look at it as well on the glasses and on the eyes, it still looks sharp. Um, Probably sort of looks close to what the Canon was doing at f4, but if we and the f4 as well, just looks a bit um, still get still has a sharpness as well. Doesn't look soft. Um, both eyes in focus, very sort of close at it. At f2.8, definitely the G Master was the sharpest out of all of them. Um, but now going at f4, they're looking very sort of similar in terms of their sharpness. Uh, bokeh wise they're all looking very very identical with the bokeh at f4 so there's not um, none of them has one better than the other they look very similar in terms of the background separation now this is a 200 millimeter at all of them still at f4 um, as you can sort of just now clear now at the compression with the 200 millimeter at f4 you can sort of uh, see how the background separation they all look very identical um, they don't look like one's better than the other. 
So they look the same in terms of the bokeh and the, sep and the background separation. The tamron, on the eyes it looks still looks soft. Um, so it's picked up the sharpness as well as f4, as you can tell from that 70 millimeter as well. And so did the Canon compared to what it was. But now they're looking... Um, on the Canon looks a bit uh, sharper on the eyes than what the Tamron does, but the Tamron has picked up on the sharpness. While the F4 and the G Master looks, still looks really sharp comparing to the other two. Um, these are all sort of um, raw files. They're not edited, no manipulation or nothing. I've just straight from the camera. Um, the, even at the background, F8, they all look exactly the same on F8 at 7200. So there's, n um, they don't, there's not one better than the other. Uh, background separation, they all look sort of identical in terms of the um, background separation. F8, if you look at them, they all look very similar in terms of the sharpness. Um, it's with the Tamron, the Canon, they're looking very identical. The sharpness, the G Master and the F4. The F4 and the Canon does look very similar, as well as the Tamron. The G Master, they lo it looks very similar, but um, it could just be me. If you look closely on the eyes, the G Master still retains a bit sharper than what the other lenses produce, as you can sort of see how it's nice and sharper on the eyes. And the glasses, I find the uh, I've been finding the G Master being a bit sharper than the other the other three brands, um, as you can probably see. So it could be just be me, but this is what I'm seeing. Um, but uh, other than that, the Tamron, the Canon, and the F4 lens they look very identical in the sharpness. In terms of the background separation at f8, they're all the, uh, basically identical. Now this is a 200 millimeter at all of them at f8. So even at 200 millimeter, the compression looks very similar. Um, at 200 millimeter, actually, I find that the G Master and the f4 gives a bit more of a softer separation in the bokeh, whereas the Canon and the Tamron you can sort of make up more of the detail of the trees at f8. While I'm shooting at 200 millimeter, you can sort of make it out. But the F4 and the G Master look softer um, in terms of the bokeh. If we go to and just zoom in on the eyes. Now, the the F4 and the Canon, the 200 millimeter, the Canon seems to be a bit sharper on the eyes and on the glasses than what the F4 is. Um, the Tamron does look a bit sharper than the Canon, especially on the eyes. Whereas the G Master still still looks sharp. Um, look, they're all very close, but um, the G Master seems to be seems to re still retain its sharpness. You can sort of tell from the eyes as well. So it still retains being the sharpest out of all all the four. And here's the background. Just zoomed in more. You can sort of tell how you can sort of make up more in the details. It doesn't completely blur out a 200 millimeter at f/8 as what the f/4 and the G Master does. So that gives you a bit of an idea as well on uh, on the lenses, on the sharpness. Even you can sort of tell on the mustache how the G Master looks a bit sharper, sharper than the others. Canon still has, looks sharp, um, but I still find that the G Master picks up better details. I hope this video helps you guys. Um, giving a bit more of an um, insight on um, what each lens can perform. Um, I did own the, the 7200 Tamron lens with the EA3 adapter. That worked really well, the autofocus and the A7 II. On my A7S II, the EA3 adapter did not work. Autofocus was very slow. Um, I have used it on the EA4 adapter, which worked a bit better than the EA3, um, but it wasn't as fast as I would get with uh, um, a native 7200 and the A7S or the A7S2. Um, the Canon AF is really good as well. It is fast. Um, uh, it's probably the same as the Tamron. I didn't have any sort of delays on a either one of them, but I found the AF and these two were the same. 
disadvantage using the adapters if this doesn't ish bother you is that you don't have IAF you can't use all the functions that you can with an adapter like you can with a native lens the the Sony lenses being native I can have access to AF um, IAF uh, the AF on the Sony lenses were a lot faster um, was a bit more faster than the um, the other two with adapters and I, um, I did love prefer the Sony G Master, the colors and the sharpness that it produced, even the bokeh. The bokeh on it was stunning. Um, the colors are just, uh, even straight from the camera, the images this lens produced was just absolutely stunning. Um, you know, you can just sort of take that image and you don't have to edit it basically and hand to your clients. It was just, everything about it was perfect. Colors, the, you know, the sharpness, the bokeh. Um, the Tamron has been the cheapest out of all of them. Then you have the F4 lens, which is coming in the second cheapest. Then you've got the Canon and the G Master. Me personally, I ended up buying the G Master and saying the Tamron. I wanted native lens. Um, I did prefer how the G Master performed. Um, there is a video, um, just check, um, here's a link to the next, my other video of the G Master lens. I've shot a whole uh, engagement shoot, uh, pre wedding shoot with this lens. Performed amazing. Absolutely loved it. Um, this lens is just um, produces just really amazing quality bokeh sharpness. Um, IAF, all the functions it's just worked really well on the G Master. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, if you can't afford the, if an f 2.8 is not an issue, you don't want to spend the money for the G Master. Go for the f4 lens. Um, as you can see, the bokeh is stunning. It does produce an amazing separation at f4. And it is a sharp lens and fast out of focus. Canon users, if you already have a Canon 7200, you want to jump to Sony, you're worried. With the A7R2, A7II, A6300, A6500, you can use the Metabone Smart Adapter with the Canon lenses and the AF will work really well. A7S2 and A7S won't work as well. Um, they don't have uh, phase detection autofocus like the other, other cameras. And you want a complete budget lens the EA3 adapter and the Tamron lens is really good. But if budget's not an issue, I would definitely strongly recommend the G Master if money is not an issue. It, you know, it's definitely worth the money. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it helped you. Check out the images below as well and check out my pre wedding uh, video with the G Master. Make a judgment for yourself. You know, let me know your thoughts. Um, this video is based on my thoughts and what I felt um, performed better. So maybe you guys have a different opinion, so please feel free to leave your comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel and uh, stay tuned for future videos. See you guys.